Good evening, everyone. My name is Aldous Valor, and every once in a while, a video is released that is so astoundingly myopic that it forces me to drag my fat ass out of retirement and in front of a camera, or in this case, a microphone. Now, the video in question comes from a man who has recently brought us such gems as this. Now, you can get after me for invoking Godwin's Law and start naming all these things, these, these phrases that represent the kind of argument that I'm making. Oh my, you're using the uh, 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 fallacy, and the fallacy, and the fallacy. I don't fucking care what you label it. Now, the reason that logical fallacies are identified in debates is to explain why an argument is flawed. It doesn't necessarily mean that you personally are flawed, even though you are, but it means that your arguments fail to stand up to scrutiny. For example, you didn't invoke Godwin's Law, you invoked the name of Adolf Hitler, and the distinction is this. Godwin's Law pertains exclusively to discussions. If we're being generous in saying that your video is a discussion between yourself and the world at large, then your video is actually anomalous of Godwin's Law, which states, as an online discussion grows longer, the probability of a comparison involving Nazis or Hitler approaches one. And you couldn't even wait four minutes to do it. Now, this isn't actually the video that I plan on ripping to shreds to leave to blow in the wind for all the world to see today. This was just for the benefit of my loyal viewers who might not have any idea of the particular brand of stability, consistency, or acumen that we have to deal with when dealing with Kazoom. The video is called Advertising in General Mentally Costs, and a link to it can be found over in the sidebar. In this video, Kazoom once again takes off his shirt and babbles on and on about something he doesn't understand. Have a listen. Every second of an ad that you see on television, in many cases, has more money involved in it than sometimes an entire season of some sort of a program on television. Now, at first I was just going to simply demand that you cite your sources on this one. But the more that that figure rolled around inside of my head, the more compelled I was to do my own research. Now, I want you to keep in mind that shredding your argument to bits is kind of like KOing a Magikarp. So I'm going to do my very best to beef up your argument as best as I possibly can. I'm going to disprove, with evidence, the absolute best possible form of your argument. And I'm going to do this by finding the high end on television commercials and the low end on television budgets. First, I looked at production costs on commercials. And I found that in 2008, it cost roughly $350,000 just to produce a 30 second commercial. That's just to make the damn thing. To air it costs even more. According to an article on Forbes.com, it cost advertisers $4 million to air a 30-second commercial during Super Bowl 48. Now, this figure is absurdly high, and it in no way reflects the average airtime cost of a 30-second ad on the national level, which is actually closer to a mere $100,000. But remember, I'm helping you. So to air a 30-second ad during the Super Bowl cost advertisers $4.5 million, and that comes out to $150,000 per second. Write that number down, Kazoom, it's important. $150,000 per second. Now, it took a substantial amount of digging to find television budgets. Movie budgets are super easy, but TV, not so much. I eventually wound up on the International Movie Database, or the Internet Movie Database, whatever the fuck, IMDB. And even then, it wasn't easy. The lowest figure I could find is from 1987, and it does not adjust for inflation. Now, since that helps your cause... I'm not going to adjust those figures for inflation either. 
1987, Star Trek The Next Generation had a production budget of $1.3 million. I know what you're thinking. $4.5 million for the commercial is a lot more than $1.3 million. And that would be true, except that The Next Generation had a production budget of $1.3 million per episode. There were 26 episodes in the first season, which puts the total production budget for season one over $33 million. So even if advertisers were charged Super Bowl rates in 2014 for a 60-second ad with a production cost of $1 million, that cost to advertisers would only be just slightly more than the production budget for one quarter of the season 33 years earlier. Now, more realistically, it costs advertisers roughly $500,000 to produce and air total a 30-second ad. And most TV shows on network and cable have a budget of about two to three million dollars per episode. Think of a website, okay? We are used to, when we go to websites, we're so used to seeing these ads in the borders of things, we're so used to seeing ads in these certain places on the, on the site, right? That we start to just block those areas out automatically. Then we run into a site that doesn't have any ads, or has very few ads, and they'll put important information in the places where we normally would be blocking out the ads. Well, it makes the website kind of hard to use because we're just thinking it's going to be an ad. You actually got one right here. Internet ads are largely ignored. In fact, across the board, internet ad click-through rates are six one-hundredths of a percent. That's a rate of six clicks for every 10,000 ads. And there's no telling what fraction of those clicks are actually intentional. But where you are wrong is that if there's no ads on my website and there's information that I want to make sure that you see, I make sure you see it. Restaurants make money by putting their most profitable items in a place on the menu where your eyes fall first. It's the same deal with websites. Now, I understand if you think I'm being petty here. I understand if you feel as though I'm picking on you over something that doesn't matter. But I'd like to point out to you that you were the one who got bent out of shape on this topic to begin with. You're the one who took off your shirt and complained about a petty, insignificant topic. The reason I had to take you to school on this topic is because I remember getting into a comment argument with you on your Gamergate video. And there were a couple of lines in that video that stuck out to me. Okay? We're talking about games. Okay? You can consider it a hobby. You can consider it just your entertainment. And people are getting bent out of shape over games. This is like people getting bent out of shape over movies. I mean, it's so pathetic. You're not getting upset over journalism in general being fucked off anymore. Journalism that actually affects people's real lives. So now, not even 60 days later, here you are getting bent out of shape over commercials. And if you truly cared about journalism being fucked in the asshole, then you totally missed the fucking mark in your video. The cost of advertisements, which you went on and on about, but didn't actually explain what they were, the true costs, it, it, they're not mental or emotional costs. They're not even fiduciary costs. They're ethical costs. Journalism is fucked, and print journalism is fucked the most. Because as we've established, internet ads are largely ignored. Print journalism has sold its fucking soul in the form of something called native advertising. Native advertising, put simply, is disguising an ad as content. Like this article, sponsored by IBM. Or this article, sponsored by Hidden Valley Ranch. It'd be the same thing as if you came to my channel expecting a video, expecting content, and seeing this. Good evening, 
everyone, it's Colonel Aldous Valor here, and tonight I want to talk to you about Views e-cigarettes. Views is the only e-cigarette that finally delivers a satisfying and great-tasting vapor experience combined with consistent and reliable performance. Designed and assembled in the USA by tobacco experts R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company, Views brings 100 years of tobacco experience to the future of vapor. Now, this will never happen, not just because I don't allow advertising on my channel at all, but it won't happen because you shouldn't smoke e-cigarettes. You should be a man and smoke real cigarettes. Now, this video to you, Kazoom, is a gift. It's a gift, Kazoom. It's a serious topic of national importance that has to do with both journalism and and advertising, which are two subjects that wind you up enough to take off your shirt and complain about them. But please, do some motherfucking research before you make this video, because we can't have the uh, 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 fallacy, and the Zewajizimajid fallacy, and the Bolabizimajid fallacy. I propose we rename all of these to the Kazoom fallacy. It's where the speaker doesn't know a motherfucking thing about what he's fucking talking about, but he takes off his shirt and complains about it while not only being inconsistent, but contradicting himself in the fucking process. I've been Aldous Valor, and you know the rest.